Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about using the direction control feature new with iClone 8 in order to speed up your workflow by easily changing the directions of your motions. This tutorial is part 2 of a series on motion editing in iClone 8 and if you haven't yet, please go check out the first tutorial which is about the auto motion alignment feature. Generally when you apply a directional motion to a character, the position and direction will be maintained throughout the clip, as you can see here when we apply a couple of walking motions. If we try to change the direction manually at the first frame of the second clip by using the rotation gizmo, you'll see that the result will end up being a bit strange, and there will be a significant amount of foot sliding. This is because you would need more directional keyframes set in order to make the rotation more accurate. With the directional control feature, you can do this a lot quicker and easier than manually by setting keyframes. Let's reapply the second clip and this time go into the motion directional control panel, which you can access directly from the timeline or by right clicking on the clip that you want to change the direction of. The first thing you'll see is color coded arrows appear, which indicate the direction of each motion. The arrows are color coded to the same color as the clips in the timeline. Their length also indicates the complete distance of the motion. You can select and rotate these arrows if you want, and their values will change in the panel. Let's proceed to rotate the second green arrow to a slightly different direction and play back. What you'll see is that the character will indeed change direction for the duration of the second clip. However, there is an unnatural popping when the directional change is initiated. There are a couple of steps required to smooth this out. The first thing we want to do is ensure that the second clip is selected and that align direction is set to previous clip. From there, instead of setting the alignment to the root, we can go into the Part and Position drop down menu and choose Left Foot, since it's the left foot that is planted when the direction is changing. When we play back, we'll see the result is better, but still choppy. We can even align to the left toe as well to see if that improves the results. In many cases, animated actors will pivot to change direction on their toes instead of their heels. However, even though the alignment has been corrected, we still need to blend the two motion clips to get a smoother result. The best way to do this in this case is to click and drag the second clip so that it slightly overlaps with the first one. This will create a transition area indicated by the white crossed out lines. If we stretch this out a bit by clicking and dragging on the sides, we can smooth out the transition so it looks much better. Once you achieve the correct transition length, you'll have a perfect result. We'll talk in more detail about blending clips in the next tutorial, but for now let's take a look at another simple scenario. In this scenario, I've already applied a few motion clips in combination. What we're going to do is change the direction of these motions a couple of times in sequence. There are some hidden props in this scene which will complement the movement in the scene and present obstacles for our character to dodge. Let's first open up the motion direction control panel to get our directions right. The first clip is fine, but I'm going to rotate the second one so that it leads toward our second barrier that the character dives over. Once we do that, you'll notice that it leaves a big gap between the end transform position of the second clip and the beginning of the third. What we need to do to resolve this is select our third clip, make sure that align direction is set to previous clip, and that the transform option is selected as well, then simply press align. However, this movement progression also includes rotation. So what we'll want to do is click on revert, then do the process again, this time with rotate also selected. Once we do that, the rotation variable will be inherited as well, leading to more accurate directional results. I'll repeat the same process for our fourth clip, again being sure to align to the previous clip both rotation and transform variables. The results can be smoothed out of course, as in the last example, but in this example we're mainly looking at motion alignment for the multiple clips. The motion direction control is essentially like a local transform value for a particular character. What this means is that even if we move the global transform of the character, the local transform won't be affected. As an example here, I'm moving the entire setup, including the props and character, to a different position on the world plane. When I do and play back, you'll see that the character will still maintain his local transform adjustments even though the global transform position changes.
In the next tutorial of this series, we'll talk about bidirectional clip blending for seamless motion matching, and a few other timeline tools for iClone 8 that allow you to quickly blend in smooth motions together flawlessly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.